Some of you know I made my own crosscut sharpening tools and uh, I spent a lot of time in the spring getting the saw ready for the winter. So I'm excited to try it out. The best item I found today was this four foot crosscut saw. Been looking for one of these for a while now. I will restore it. It's a one man saw. It's got the original handle and it's got a couple of holes here that I can actually make my own handle. And it's got a hole on this side for hanging, but I could also make make it into a two man if I wanted to. Good evening guys. It's out in my shed tonight working on this crosscut saw. It's something I picked up in August for about $45 at a flea market. And it was in pretty rough shape. A lot of surface rust. There is a bit of pitting here. And I've been using a lot of online help to get this thing fixed up. I don't know much about saws, but I am learning. And uh, so what I did first is I cleaned up the saw, the blade, with sandpaper. I used 100 grit sandpaper and WD-40 making sure to sand with the saw. I made sure to stay away from the teeth. You can damage the kerf if you sand the teeth. And apparently when you're sanding these little microscopic scratches can actually affect the way the saw cuts. So you always want to sand with the saw. I also heard that a sharpening stone with kerosene works well for cleaning the blade. I removed the old handle, made a new one a lot more comfortable and eventually I soaked the blade in vinegar for almost two days this helped remove the rest of the rust from the teeth you know just a small amount of rust apparently can really affect the way it cuts and when I first started using the saw it was binding on itself I built a jig to hold the blade straight for sharpening and I'll probably make something better but for now this is pretty good I cleaned up the teeth with a three-sided file, making sure to follow the edge. You know, I wasn't really sharpening it, I was just cleaning it up. I made a blade guard from an old hose. After soaking in vinegar, it kind of left the blade dull, so I shined it up with a wire wheel on the drill. I rubbed a mixture of beeswax and palm oil to condition the blade and handle. And the saw cuts much nicer now, it doesn't bind on itself. And pretty soon I'll be taking this saw on my sled to my winter camp for cutting firewood. That's the whole point of this saw is to make it usable. Today I'm going to be making an auxiliary handle for my crosscut saw. If you're not sure what that means, it's uh, basically a secondary handle that you attach to your saw. It just adds more stability and comfort. It's just more ergonomic. And uh, after uploading my last video, some of you suggested that I make one. And all the uh, auxiliary handles I've seen on crosscut saws have all been vertical. But uh, last night I was rummaging through all my scrap parts and odds and ends. I got quite a few bins full of them. I found this piece here. And it's uh, an I-beam clamp, and it screws, it's got a threaded bolt here that screws tight, and it's got a threaded hole here. The only problem with this is this is horizontal, I want something vertical. So I'm going to see what I can come up with this today. Um, found this bolt, 7 inches long, threads perfectly into this piece here. Uh, found some of this hardwood and I took my mini splitter and a maul and broke off a chunk of wood for my handle. This is going to go over top of this threaded bolt. So I drilled a hole through it last night and I don't have a drill press or anything like that so when I came out the other end you can see it's quite crooked. So I tried it again. A bit more successful the next time and I got this handle. So today what I'm going to do is recess this head. 
I just don't like it sticking out the top like that. It's just mainly for looks. Uh, round off the handle, shape the handle, make a collar for this to make it stronger. Put linseed oil on it because this wood is really dry. And I want to take a tap and die set and possibly uh, make a hole, drill a hole vertically in this. So I have uh, both horizontal and a vertical auxiliary handle. So we'll see how that works out. So I've done quite a bit of sanding on it. I put a little bit of a swell on the end here, shined up that uh, collar. So I think I'm going to try to do a bit of a color match for that and then put some linseed oil on it. So here's the finished handle, and the way this works is you put that over there, tighten up this bolt, and it clamps it against the blade. Just give it a good tighten, and there's your extra handle. I have it threaded on the sides as well, so I have a few different options. So this here is my design. Kind of have a plan in place, and I'm going to get to work. This here was just a little handle I made for carrying it. I'll probably put that back on afterwards. Guys, this is where I'm at. I have a little wing nut here. To tighten this, I have a rod going right through into that jig that I had earlier. And what you do is you put your saw with the teeth sticking up in here. put this other piece on and then you turn up these tabs to lock everything into place and you can just 
tilt it back and forth to work on it and use this wing nut to make it nice and tight. This uh, threaded rod that goes through here, it's still, you know, the glue is still wet. But once everything's dry, once you tighten this, this nut, it's going to be rock solid. Good morning. I'm just continuing on from last night. I got a little bit too late and we got hit with a real powerful blizzard. So I had to call it a night. I'm pretty much done this jig. I put this leather strap back on. This is for hanging it. This joint right here was originally supposed to be a 90 degree lap joint, but I screwed it up. And I had to cut it off because I just this is the only piece of wood I have long enough. So I put this kind of joint in with pocket screws going in, glued it. Still wasn't strong enough for when you tighten down this uh, threaded rod here. So I put in a couple of straps on this side and on this side as well. That should make it strong enough. I put my leather handle back on. This is for carrying it. I have my leather working tools here. And what I'm going to do is make a leather pouch, very simple, rustic style leather pouch for my cross cut tools. I have a straight edge kerf gauge that I made, a leaf feeler gauge, and two taper triangular files. I still need to make a raker gauge yet. Just got to find the right material. So my leather tool pouch is all complete. Still not 100% sure about closing it. Probably come up with something better than that. But these snaps are on the back. I think this saw jig is complete. I just want to show you one more time how it's used. There's two metal tabs that fold down. This piece comes off. Your saw goes on here. There's a wooden dowel that the front hole on the saw slides over. Put this piece back in and lock it in place with these tabs. I have a wing nut on the end that I can tighten and loosen to angle. Leather handle for hanging it, for carrying it, my tool pouch. I also put on a stain, homemade stain with made out of vinegar and steel wool. Give it that rustic look. So I think it's complete. Good evening guys, I just wanted to share a little project I've been working on for the past couple months and that is a toolbox specifically made for my crosscut saw. A lot of you know that I have a winter camp and I just recently brought my crosscut saw home as probably one of my most important tools out there besides my axe. And even though I restored this crosscut saw about a year and a half ago, I'm still learning and I was re-watching a lot of older videos that I had watched previously and realized that I had missed some steps. So I decided to put together a toolbox 
find some of the tools that I've been missing. And some of these tools are pretty hard to come by, so I decided just to make them. I do enjoy making my own tools. So I just repurposed this little crate, turned it into the toolbox, did some wood burning on it. And now I just want to go through some of the tools I made. Not all of them are homemade, but most of the important ones are. So now that I have some proper tools, I'm going to spend the summer getting my saw ready for the fall. My favorite tool I made is this jointer. Pretty simple tool, but what it does basically is it curves this file so it fits the breast of your saw. You notice my saw is curved compared to like a regular handsaw, which is straight. So you have two threaded bolts on the end and one in the middle and it just puts a little bit of pressure on it to curve it. And you just run this over the teeth and it makes all the teeth the same height. You know if you have some teeth that are sticking out further than others they're going to be doing more work and the saw is not going to be very efficient. So that's the jointer. Favorite one right there. The next one is my saw set. This took a pair of vice grips, did some modifications to it, and what it does is you clamp this over the teeth, and this bolt will actually pry the tooth over. And depending on how far you screw this in, depends on how far uh, you bend the tooth over. That's for setting your kerf. You ever notice on a saw, your teeth kind of go like that? Well, that tool bends the teeth over to a, a certain amount. My second favorite tool. Third one is a raker gauge. Uh, what you do is you set this over top of your raker teeth and you run your file. You always want your raker teeth a little bit shorter than your uh, cutting teeth. And what this does is just takes off a little bit off your raker teeth, making them slightly shorter. Uh, one day I want to replace this piece here with the hardened steel. Eventually, you know, ru running a file over this, you're going to take some steel off. So I have a chunk of a annealed piece of file that I will replace that with one day. Next tool is my spider gauge. It's a cross shaped tool with little legs and one of the legs are a little bit shorter than the rest and when you put it on a, surf, a flat surface you can feel it that it rocks and what this does is it measures the kerf. Once again I said that uh, your teeth are bent like this and you put this tool and if it rides flat, you know your kerf is set. If it rocks a bit, you know it has to, your tooth has to come over a little bit more. And this is set for 12 thou of an inch. Another important tool that I picked up is a leaf feeler gauge. This measures very uh, thin amounts. And for me to set all my tools, I need this gauge to make sure I'm uh, doing it the right thickness. You can see you got 0 0.012 or point, 0 0.30 millimeters, 0 0.20 millimeters, and so on. Very important tool. I have here what's called a pin gauge. And it's just a, a depth gauge that you slide uh, once you file down your raker teeth. It's just to quickly check to make sure that they're at the right height. Pretty simple tool. This 
this is a little punch I have. It's for swedging over the, the raker teeth. Your raker teeth are shaped like this and some people like to hammer over the edges to make it more like a chisel. That's what this tool is for. I also have a little hammer to go with it. I have a flat edge here to use for an anvil. Some people, uh, what they like to do is when they get their saw that they're going to restore, once again you have your kerf on your teeth. Some people like to flatten them out and start from scratch again. So I got a flat edge here. Leather pouch with a deer antler button on it just to keep some of my tools. All the smaller ones. I have a simple thing I made from leather to hold my triangular tapered files. I have a handle here I made from a broom handle and it's just for leverage so you have more control when you're filing. Just stick your file in there like that. A pair of pliers. Um, before I had my saw set tool I used to just take the pliers and pry the teeth over and then check them with my spider gauge. Uh, what else I got here? I have a, the head of a ball peen hammer to use as an anvil. Some people like to hammer the teeth over instead of prying them over. I haven't tried that yet myself. And finally, sharpening stone. Uh, this is good for cleaning the saw. You soak this in kerosene or WD-40 and you go along the saw blade cleaning off the rust and it's also good for taking the burr off the back of the tooth once you file it. Made a simple leather pouch so this uh, stone isn't rubbing up against other tools and maybe chipping it or taking gouges out of it. So that's my toolbox. Pretty simple. And I'm going to get to work here pretty soon, getting this uh, saw back in shape.